Well, much like the saying of if a tree falls in the forest and nobody is there to see it, does it make a sound tonight? If nobody is in the stadium to see a replayed match between Roma and Udinese and Roma pull it out at the very end, did it even happen? Well, apparently so. I was starting to get worried because even and the Roma's official account took a bit of time to find an official photo from Getty Images, which is what we use on the website from the game. Which le- I-, I was this close to thinking the entire thing was uh, l- like uh, uh, a mirage. It didn't happen. It didn't yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah, it didn't happen. I was close to thinking it. I was close to thinking it, but three points. Three points. Before we get into whatever that was. Just thank you to all of the Patriots who stood in for that one, because that was that was a test for a group that is already prone to psychological torment. Everyone did pretty well for that very, very condensed, what felt like a match, uh, the, enough emotion to fill an entire 90 minute match. We We got that all in to that brief uh, 20 to 30 minutes period. So if you would like to join what is, again, akin to basically whatever the footballing equivalent of like Alcoholics Anonymous is, uh, people struggling with this thing, uh, uh, patreon.com slash Roma Press and then at IS Roma Press on social media. What do we say? What what do we say? So Roma... (laughs) In a match that I'm sure you thought the same, and I assume 99.9% of people also thought coming into this, um, we get this in Italian football, even when it's not the replayed match, where you have two teams have the wink and the nod, and sometimes you get the, you get prosecuted for it. Uh, sometimes you impo- get a sanction imposed against you. Maybe somebody along the lines of Antonio Conte, who uh, I, for, there have been so many cases. His was he didn't blow the whistle right on on. Uh, he essentially kept it to himself. He didn't tell on his teammates when there was a, an agreement before the match. That's what I thought we were getting tonight, Andy. I, I thought we were going to get two teams that were just going to kick the ball about the pitch, settle for one point, and let's get on our way. Why stay in Friuli any more than we already have to? And we were treated to the exact opposite of what I expected. And again, what I I assume 99.9% of people thought we were going to get from this replayed match. I, we, we come into it. It's the 72nd minute. It's midweek. It's going to be a difficult campaign remaining for both sides, both sides, new manager and Fabio Cannavaro. What, you know, let's, let's just take the point. You, me, Handshake agreement, wink and a nod. Let's take the point, call it a night, and let's be on our way. I could not have been more shocked as to what we were treated to. Both sides going balls to the wall. Scoring opportunities galore. I mean, I would venture to say, Andy, we, we, we... I felt more confident about Roma's attacking football in these 18 official minutes than I did against Bologna at the weekend. What the hell was that? Each side could have had at least one goal. Svilar made a spectacular save. As Moon missing a sitter. What the hell was that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As Chris Smalling gets injured, that classic. Yeah. <laughs> A I fan tried favorite. to save that until the end, but I... you know it's it, it, and I guess it, listen. I mean, uh, a lot of people will be like, "Well, how can you get injured uh, when you play less than twenty minutes?" I think it's actually this was why this game was tricky because when you play, you you Roma were supposed to play eighteen minutes plus plus added time for whatever reason. Pairetto only gave four minutes of added time. <laughs> It felt it felt like he should have given like fifteen, given how the game was looking. But yeah, um, you thought the minimum would be fifteen. I, I I thought at minimum there would be ten minutes. Yeah, there would be uh, something uh, four minutes. Bare okay. minimum. Okay. Well, anyway, we get those four minutes. But the problem is that in this game, you have to you have to start red hot. 
You have to get yes. going really, really early. You cannot linger. You cannot warm up. Uh, so that that so that came down to I mean uh, Daniel De Rossi just said I had no idea how to prepare this match because you it's really it comes down to that you have no idea how to prepare twenty minutes against uh, against a team that you've already met a couple of weeks ago you there there is already an existing scoreline it's one one um, but the context is completely different and the stakes are just the same you have to win you have to win both teams udinese had to win because they need to avoid relegation and uh, and right now they're in trouble because anytime you hire fabio cannavaro you're in trouble as a team <laughs> and, and and for roma this is i mean for roma this is so huge that if you see daniele de rossi's celebration that just speaks to how huge this result tonight was i mean it is a, a huge result I, I don't even know how to really digest some of the things that we saw on the pitch because it is such a, a unique s- setup coming into this. First, I, can, can we start with that? Because I know, and somebody pointed me to this uh, uh, a, a few days prior to this, just after we recorded, but, and we already knew this, but Sadia has a very unique protocol when it comes to the replay uh, earlier in the season was it Luton Town they had a similar situation where one of the players collapsed but but they don't resume to where it happened they, they, they replayed the entire thing can we say now this is obviously going to be an exception uh, Serie A these 20 minutes are, are had more action than 40% of Serie A does ever 40% of the matches every single weekend in Serie A do. I mean, some of them are are, are mind numbingly boring. What do you think of this protocol to begin for for Lega Serie A? And I said this in the group chat prior to the winner, and even though they won, I, I'm still not going to change my mind. I, that was a shit show. I, I it was difficult for me to even take some of it serious. Well, I mean, it's 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 again, it's the Lega Serie A never disappoints. It uh, always provides us with entertainment, for, but for, for all the wrong reasons. It's uh, that's just the yes. way the wor- world of Italian football works. I, you know, it almost felt like uh, we were we were diving back into a, a bad dream. You know, I mean, mm. the team the team traveled to Udine this afternoon. They flew to Udine. They landed in Udine at 1 p.m. local time. They were on the pitch training at 6.30 p.m. Um, And now they're flying back to Rome. On Sunday, they play against Napoli. I mean, it just, it feels surreal. It almost feels like today was never meant to happen, right? It almost felt like really like an episode of Twin Peaks where you have no idea what the hell went on, but <laughs> something happened, but you just don't know what exactly happened. You just know that you're in the hands of a madman. In the case of Twin Peaks, uh, that madman is David Lynch, who has sort of an idea of what to do with his characters. In this case, the madman is Serie A president Lorenzo Casini, who has no idea what he's doing. And uh, we have to, you know, adapt deliver entertainment, and also, more importantly, get the results we need. Roma tonight, they were coming off a really emphatic loss to Bologna at home. Um, you know, that a loss that definitely stung uh, because of where it happened, how it happened, um, the way Roma looked uh, that night. And tonight, it wasn't going to go much easier than that. This VR pulls off a brilliant save. Asmund misses a very easy goal. Oh, that was and brutal. all of it, all of it packed into 18 minutes. I mean, when was the last time we saw something like this? And and then obviously Roma do the classic Roma thing, which is score a goal at the death. Uh, are we, you know, that that famous, you know, that famous graph of, uh, you know, I get my hopes up, I get disappointed, you know, that whole <laughs> triangle yeah. thing. Yes. Where are we right now? You know, where are we? Uh, I. I I truly don't know. It was so mind blowing to me that this was actually happening. I like you. I I was waiting to like wake up from a dream. And by the way, uh, Lorenzo Cassini, the the president of Legacy, uh, 
with him, when he was first uh, appointed to the role, what was it, two years ago, three years ago at this point? Something like that. I actually thought, okay, younger guy coming in, he's going to understand, have at least some understanding of, uh, and breathe new life into this, into, you know, the way any odd things, try and take it from the dark ages, so to speak. But for this match to be scheduled tonight, to go forward the way it did, and then to see him after Roma rightly levied criticism against him, he, did you use well you wrote the article i think on the website yeah about what the way he responded to that Rossi. like he, he yeah, just the he weirdest was, the weirdest but, he but it's is still, such a weird guy he yeah looks but he's weird a weird too, guy the but way. then you but then you read why he's weird and he's uh because he's very close friends with uh, claudio lotito and uh yes the, the every time the the council has voted every time casini was voted uh the, the reaction from most of the old guard of Serie A clubs, so people ran by guys like Lotito, uh, were extremely happy because clearly this guy is on very good political terms with those with those clubs. And so, you know, we, I mean, I'm not even going to go there. I'm not going to call conspiracies, but still, it's just... It's sort of it's a perfect res- representation of how football works in Italy. Uh, tonight was... I mean, even coming on here is a is a weird thing for me because I don't yes. exactly know. Like, I had people asking me if I was going to do a pregame live stream, if I was going to do a postgame live stream. But uh, what exactly are we going to comment on? Because, uh, honestly, it feels like, you know, Pairetto turn it on and turn it off. I, I wouldn't even have anything against uh, actual football games being this long. I think it just takes off so much of the stress. You can go about your business after half an hour. Great. You know, it's it's fantastic. I, it, how about the NFL being reduced to 30 minutes? Because more or less of a, a, an NFL game should last this long. It shouldn't last four and a half hours. Um of watching the Chicago Bears destroy the Oakland Raiders in, in, in the rain. The same the same goes for Roma playing against Udinese at the Dutch Arena in Friuli. You shouldn't be, you know, uh, bound to to watch two hours of that crap. You should just get uh, half an hour, get in, get out, move on to better things in life. And tonight, I, I think both teams were extremely nervous. You felt it, that there was a, a lot of attention a lot of a lot of it just purely because of how new this setup was yes you're starting a game and you know exactly what the stakes are and you know exactly what the score line is you you know what preceded these 72 minutes but you also know that uh, you have very limited time to get it right and if you don't get it right it can cost you tonight thankfully it cost udinese roma come out victorious and I forgot to mention, maybe you know this off of the top of your head, but uh, Cassini, he he uh, he was a professor at a certain university in Roma, the one that most people are familiar with. Do you do you know where he taught for almost fourteen years? I see now. I didn't Wait, know it was that much. Sapienza, where, where, where? yeah. Okay. Come on, there's only one school. Uh, one school. Uh, come on, one university in that area that everybody knows of. And yes, for 14 years he taught there. Um, so clearly that is uh, that has to be where he and the uh, Lotito sort of uh, knocked boots, so to speak. I listen. I have an issue with this entire thing. I can understand because I, there was some of this debate going on amongst the patrons as to whether you should just replay the entire thing or when it gets to a certain point because their argument was well it was 71 minutes if it happens that late in the match how can you just replay it and i don't know i mean the same way we could if it happened in the 35th i I don't really understand the difference Uh, if a match is interrupted and not completed it's interrupted whether it's the the 30th or the 70th minute but i'm not going to save uh I, I'm going to save my complaints on Legacy for another day. We can always do that. There, we are never short of uh, material in that regard. But they pulled this out in such, such a spectacular way because, as you sort of mentioned already, 
the circumstance, right? The circumstances leading up to this were bizarre. The actual play on the pitch was bizarre. It, it sort of reminded me a bit of like a Sunday league game where you're just going out there with your friends to have a run about the pitch just to get some exercise in or something like that. There, there was so little shape to either either team, but the scoring chances were immense. And then Cristante pulling that one. I'm not going to say pulling it out of his backside, but somebody in the group chat, and I apologize by uh, forgetting who it was said, we may remember that goal along the likes. Of, we may remember that goal in the same cult sense as we do the goal of um, uh, Yang Gambiwa uh, in the in the derby. Now, I, I would say Cristante is more vital, way more important, and uh, far more uh, has far more quality than Yang Gambiwa uh, ever did. But I understood what he was trying to say because this, the bizarre nature enveloping this entire thing, I think is what sort of adds to the mystique of that goal. Because at no point were you, were I, or again, 99% of people, three points didn't even come into this conversation when, when speaking of this replay. It was never about, well, what if we tried to win it? It was all of us. Every single one of us, or at least every single person I encountered, had the mindset of one point. One point, uh, have to go out there, have to try to beat Atalanta, have to do whatever you can to beat Napoli, uh, have to do whatever you can to get a result to Germany, and and basically bypassing this match. This this match was an afterthought, but I, I don't think I can underscore enough just what sort of difference this makes. And I know, again, it's sort of easy to dismiss because it sounds a tad like hyperbole, but but it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm truly not being hyperbolic because we essentially, looking at the table, because let's, let's not forget, Atalanta also has a match in hand. They still have to play their replay against Fiorentina. And we thought, okay, well, if they win that, we, we we go down to sixth in the table because we're going to settle for points, so on and so forth. This could be huge. I mean, at the end of the season, when we are looking back, this absolute shit show of 20 minutes in Friuli, as you mentioned, Roma took this so serious that they showed up like an hour before the an hour before the match, uh, uh, just to, uh, just to you know, almost as like a, not an hour, but you understand what I'm saying. Basically, almost like a sign of, uh, is the word incredulous? How do you say that? Incredulous? Yeah, something like that. Yes, incredulous. <laughs> almost as a sign. No. <laughs> to, oh. This is it's what okay. happens. When it's okay. You this spend is what happens when you have between two countries and master. Not only language. that, when you have five kids, you know everybody's well, screaming "goo ga ga ga." You can go, well go, hold go, on. Go. You you can appreciate this, by the way, because you you have spent time in in multiple countries too. So, yes. Um, I had uh, in my in WhatsApp with the family group chat. Um, my <laughs> one of my family members. They 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 are currently uh, 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 vacationing in in Florida, and they asked to me what the American saying screw the pooch meant. And I had never heard that before. No, no. Have idea. you ever heard what? that? No, I don't know. Is that like I, a... I had no I had no idea. But I, had I guess, never I mean, once heard <laughs> I, and it sounds they asked like something me what from it... the neighborhood. I mean it sounds like something you hear. <laughs> I, I had never once heard that in my entire life. I I, I was more fascinated as to what the context was this to who in Florida would say that to them because it Absolutely. That that seems like something you that would you would only hear if there was trouble. But I didn't ask questions. Did, but anyway, did, Ro- yeah. did Roma did Roma screw the pooch tonight? Is that is, I, am I using it in the correct context? Did Roma with this goal at I, the death? Did they screw the I, absolute pooch? They, they <laughs> the <laughs> voice they, note they left to me in the in the have just in the in the dialect of Veneto. Just it, it, it was superb hearing somebody say that. But anyway. Uh, the context surrounding this match and all of the ridiculous 
behavior from Legacy, all of the befuddlement at all of us that this was actually going to happen. We could look back on this kind of like in the way I do with the conference league, how you and I did nothing but skewer the entire thought of it essentially up until the semifinal of the competition, at which point we said, oh, yeah, we are completely bought in. We have always loved conference league completely bought in. That is essentially. I, I remember how- that turnaround. That turnaround was historical. <laughs> That's that, in the history yeah. books of the Roma press spot because we're at no, no, yes, no. I, and then well, Roma, listen. then Roma came back against Bodo or something, and we're like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> if you can't beat them, join them, I guess. But in all seriousness, I, I, I know right now in this moment, it's two points. Okay, great. Not that big of a deal. It's Udinese. I just want to underscore in this moment how like of a, an absolute treasure these two points could be. An a, an absolute treasure. I mean, I if you look at the remainder of the calendar, I've said it for the previous few weeks, okay? It, it, it is difficult. It is extremely, extremely, extremely difficult. And again, nobody ever considered this match, the replay, and the few days we've had to actually digest what this means, what final result could be had on either side. Are we just going to ship it and take the point? Nobody ever, ever thought of this match as three points. Well, now it is a reality. I mean, for you, are you... Am I am I just over overemphasizing this? But I, I I feel like people are not making a big enough deal of it because I, this could be huge in the long run. I I mean significantly huge. This is huge uh, for everything for for the the moment that we were in for what we are fighting for. Uh, not even the fact that okay, well. Bologna were seven points ahead of us going into tonight. Fine. Bologna Correct. is not the team you're chasing. You know, you're you're not chasing Bologna. You're just trying to stay ahead of Atalanta. Uh, that's what, yes. we, what you're doing. Um, and so tonight was essential. Tonight was essential because not only did you have to send a strong message to show that you've recovered from, from that poor display we saw uh, against Bologna at the Stadio Olimpico. You also had to give yourself some confidence ahead of a game against uh, Napoli, who have been awful as of late. Awful. But we know how Napoli love to turn around against us. Um, and also, I at think... At home, they, no less. I, at home, think, no less. I think they also went into Ritiro. Uh, and uh, <laughs> they realized De Laurenti's was trying to book a hotel to put all his team and staff in and the closest Oh that joke right it's are you trying to set me up I know I'm swear to are god Are you I, trying to make this the the, the god, no no the tourism I, I, section I, No 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 I swear to god I swear to god I swear to god that that's the case I read it in uh, tutonapoli.net I think it's called uh, and it's true uh, De Laurenti was 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 trying to send a message to his team, and so he made them go through a retiro. But the retiro uh, involved finding a hotel, and the nearest hotel he could find to the city of Naples was in Caserta, which is not exactly near Naples. So no, um, but- Napoli are going to go through some bizarre thing in these next three games, uh, three days, in order to prepare for the match against Roma. It's going to be fun uh, to see how that works out for them. But this was important in three different contexts, to, to show that you've bounced back from Bologna, to show that you are confident again ahead of Napoli, and to show that you are still in the Champions League race and that you're not yes. giving up. Because what happened last year? What happened? When we lost against Atalanta, now please go and look at our stretch of results after that lo- loss to Atalanta, 3-1 to one, uh, in Bergamo, where uh, Palomino just absolutely crushed Paolo Dybala's <laughs> leg. That was coming off directly following an impressive result in the Europa League uh, after beating Feyenoord. So, and that's when our Serie A season crumbled. That's when all our hopes for Champions League uh, through qualification in the standings in Serie A just faded away like that. So tonight was so important because of it, because you didn't want to see those same scenes, the the same Roma that just sort of slumps its shoulders and accepts its fate. And uh, 
tonight they went against their fate. Tonight, there was that spark, that magic that sometimes Roma are capable of that makes you go, oh, my God, we we still we still got this. We still got a chance. We, st- we, st- we are still in it. Absolutely. That, that is something I can't underscore enough. I, again, I, I think obviously winning obviously boosts your confidence, but, but I think the, the manner in which you won, I've, I, maybe I do put too much emphasis on this, but to get something at the end like that, after you conceded a lot of shots and you also missed two very easy opportunities to get one at the end like that, I think is huge and can give you a big lift coming into this thing with Napoli. I am not even going to attempt to touch the thing you said about them finding a hotel and and try to send a message because I, if you are in Napoli, I can think of different ways. If you want to send a message to somebody, uh, never mind. I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. This is going to get bad. (laughs) Let's talk about this match, though, with Napoli. Trying to get any sort of understanding of Napoli this season is impossible. It is impossible. It is absolutely impossible. Because to think that this was the team that you want to talk about firing on all cylinders last season. I mean, they could not get a thing wrong. Defensively perfect. In attack perfect. Now, it, it appears as if they essentially sold their souls for that Scudetto. Because I, I can draw no other conclusion than they had somebody or a group of people got together in Campania and they said, we are going to collectively all put our souls in the middle here. We just want or one. Maybe, or perhaps, perhaps a very bold man from Certaldo threw on a curse following his exit you know i'm just saying that uh our good old mister uh luciano uh you know who who tends to who tends to chickens and and, and geese in his free time uh maybe he also he has won. a lovely restaurant i never give his restaurant the proper credit have you ever been there i've never you know been where it to, is I've, I've, I've been to the restaurant of our good friend galopera but i haven't been to <laughs> I haven't been to the restaurant. Oh, of, man. Of, of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to to Spalletti, so I have to make up for it. I visited. I visited, unfortunately, the oh, restaurant man. of uh, of our good friend. Oh, I'm not gonna God, go that, in the, to that territory. That just makes because me think of we're gonna um, get a lo- lawsuit. So I'm, I no, don't but want... what? Yeah, well, the, the only. Italian speakers are those who yeah, nobody will understand are going to school. understand this reference. This is um, oh, <laughs> that just makes me think of the video where he said, Telerario Stadio, Galopera, John Solan. Anyway, um, <laughs> I can't get any sort of read on Napoli this season. At, I, I, clearly, clearly, nobody can because De Laurentiis, he went from Garcia, who immediately you and I said, from the moment that happened, from the moment it happened in the summer, we said, okay, this it's is going gonna, to be a disaster. Yeah. Disaster. And it was. And you know, you know what's the greatest thing is the Garcia on his first day at the press conference for Napoli. We didn't mention it, but one of the first things he said was, uh, I haven't seen a single second of Napoli play under Luciano Spalletti, so I'm starting off with a clean slate. I mean, what the hell is that? So uh, De-, De Laurentiis goes through Garcia. Then well, a far cry from uh, we're going to move uh, uh, the team to. I mean, come on. Backtracks from Garcia tells Garcia you're fucking sacked in the locker room. Like literally, he tells him that he admitted it in his press conference. He said, you, "I told I went to into the locker room and I said, what the fuck are you doing?' It was the match against Tempoli, and I told him <laughs> you're fucking sacked, and." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he went and he called back Walter Mazzari. Walter Mazzari, who probably the last time he saw a football, he was at Watford trying to yeah, speak right. English. How can I make this worse? And uh, 
the, the pro- video of him speaking oh, English, by the way, oh, is oh, history. The, that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, it, that's that's heritage. That's football heritage, my friend. Um, you can see his eyes looking at the the the, 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 the cards with the text on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and and then he lasts he lasts three months, and then they get Calzona, who's an interim manager who. On a part-time works, basis, works part-time because he's also overlooking the <laughs> the Slovakian team. So that I'm is, just, it's it's perfect. It's perfect. It's absolutely it's perfect. It's quintessential Italian football. It's, no, no, no. It's, it's quintessentially Southern Italian football, and I'm afraid yes. that also that Rome teams like Roma, teams like Napoli, whenever they win big, they have to crash. They have to crash and burn because they're not accustomed to this kind of uh, spotlight. That is the only thing of use Fabio Capello has said over the last 20 years, wherein every time he is asked about the Scudetto of 2000, 2001, he goes out of his way, not out of his way. He ensures to make the reference that the city does not know, the city, the supporters, they, they don't know how to handle winning. They don't know how to handle success. He couldn't be more correct. It is, it is, it is absolutely true. At least in, in the season after uh, Roma won the Scudetto. I mean, it didn't go this bad as it is for Napoli. I mean, I, I haven't had time. Again, our data group uh, off today again. I don't know what the record is for a team that had just won the Scudetto, but I, th- this has to be up there with among the greatest falls from, uh, from the sky. I mean, this is, this is worse than, I mean, uh, this is absolutely, in my opinion, is, it's, it's really, su- it's mishandled on such, on so many levels, mishandled from, from everything from the summer, from the, how they treated Luciano Spalletti, from how they kept looking for replacements. I mean, uh, De Laurentiis openly said that he tried getting Luis Enrique and then Luis Enrique is an asshole. So he, he, he didn't even then consider them. Um, <laughs> and then his natural option, he even spoke to Tiago Motta and now Tiago Motta's agent has been basically taking a dump on the De Laurentiis' yeah. head for the past few months. Uh, every time he's been asked about De Laurentiis, he's just made no secret of absolutely hating him. Everything, yeah, even if you didn't know, you know De Laurentiis works in the from, entertainment industry just by the way he behaves. It's awful, it's, but but it's, it's it, it goes from him to the roster to how badly it's built. And they've been through so many ups and downs this season that you you truly don't know what you're going to get this, uh, this weekend. You don't know. If you're Roma, you don't know what version of Napoli you can get because uh, maybe you get the Napoli that has some pride left that has quality it has still has the same quality players it had last season um with the exception of 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 the defense and that's where Roma have to focus on if there is something that Napoli have been terrible at this past season is oh, the defense with Kim Min Jae's departure they've failed to they have Juan Jesus starting for them they have Juan Jesus being the starting defender being the captain in uh, when Giovanni Di Lorenzo is not there so that's all you need to know is that's a team with Juan Jesus in the lineup if Juan Jesus is not there then you have Nathan um, who's awful you have Ostigard who's eh. overall this is this should be an invitation for Roma not to be afraid. If you're going to go to to the to the to 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 Naples and play against Napoli, this is the moment. This is the moment yes. because we, you have everything going for you. Napoli don't Napoli. They're not going to make Champions League. Napoli are demotivated. Most of their players are likely going to, going to be gone this summer because they yeah, feel like goodbye. whatever yeah. effort, whatever dedication they put in over these last few months to win that goddamn Scudetto, it didn't pay off. They were being treated like shit. So Roma have all the momentum. Oddly enough, Roma have all the momentum going into this game. And there is just so many things that they can exploit about Napoli, despite the fact that they have only, what, less than three days to prepare. Yes, and that is what I am eager to see. They have, even prior to the win against Napoli in December, which we felt would sort of be a catalyst to sparking, breathing new life into the into Roma. It obviously wasn't in hindsight. But even prior to that game, they have struggled against Napoli mightily. This is where you have to build on tonight 
and you have to exploit them in every discernible manner. And even the players that were thriving last season have have folded into themselves. I mean, guys that were uh, you know, that were that were the catalyst behind their Scudetto run have demotivated. Doesn't even yeah. do it. No, no, just they just, it, just fallen off, fallen off yes. the face of the earth completely. It, it, it's unbelievable. So if there was ever a time, Jelinski has been starting for them, and he's openly signed a contract with Inter. So they, right. that's all you need to know. They have a player who's openly said, "I am going to play for another team," and he's Superb. starting for them. Superb. All right. Well, we will be back after then. I I, I was stunned. Even the idea of doing a podcast today after this thing, after Udinese, having to react to it, I, I couldn't have ever envisioned it. But guess what? When the facts change, the circumstances change, I didn't want to come on here and talk about the one point. I wanted to come on here and talk about the win, and we got, got it. it. My gosh, we, 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 we got, got it. it. We, we got, got it. it. We got it. We got it. And it is only right that the most... Uh, like unimpressive in a very positive sense, guy Brian Cristante, not flashy in any discernible manner, is the one who gets the goal and ultimately the win for Roma. Ladies Oof, and gentlemen, okay, we got him. Quoting, we got great, him. great. <laughs> we got him, George. All right, w. we'll be back after the match against Napoli. Until then, everyone, ciao, ciao.